Hey, what's up guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today. And uh, we're going to show you a injured box turtle. Okay, one of many, many injured box turtles that we get throughout the year. Just before we get into that, right in that bottom corner, right down there is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that and we appreciate you doing so and following along week after week after week. Now let's get right into this. All right, so every single come springtime all the way through fall, we get inundated with injured turtles, especially box turtles, primarily hit by vehicles. We get hundreds of them brought to us a year. Now we get the aquatic turtles too. And so a lot of the times we honestly just, when we get them in, we instantly go into what we're supposed to do. We just start dealing with it and taking care of them. And I tend to forget to at least video document some of these different turtles and their processes and how things go. However, this time I happen to remember one. <laughs> And it's not going to be very long. It was a very simple one, very easy one uh, to, to deal with, but just kind of shows you some of the things that these little animals have to deal with that's unfortunate in the wild. And yes, a lot of the times you have scumbags that's just purposely trying to hit these things that will purposely try and hit them when they're in the road, but they get hit a lot. And I know vets offices and rescues and rehabilitation centers and uh, zoos get phone calls by the dozens a year uh, for found a turtle or found an injured turtle. And so this is just going to show you one of many that we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis, when it comes to spring, summer, and early fall. All right. Now, let's just go ahead and let's show you this beautiful little box turtle. All right, guys, so this particular one right here, this is one, man, I'm telling you, we probably have anywhere from 15 to 30 plus box turtles like this, this girl right here turned over a week, especially in the summertime. A lot of them injured, kind of like this, this girl right here, been hit by cars, hit by lawnmowers, hit by weed eaters. This is actually an easy one. This is super easy. We'll have them come in where they've been crushed. But this right here, this is this is a really really easy one. Okay, now I'm not I'm not going to show you the whole thing because we've already done some of the stuff. With this right here, it's simply just cleaning the wound. You can either use peroxide or betadine. Betadine works just as well. Um, they both work like an uh, antiseptic, and with just doing, of course, uh, any kind of antibiotic ointment, that's obvious purpose is to just keep infection from setting in and allow the wound to start with the healing process. Now, for this one right here, this one is actually quite simple in the fact that the only thing that needs to happen is just this piece of shell here just needs to go right back into place, just like that. See how I did that? That one, that's all that needed. Now, there's a couple of things we could do with this, this little girl right here. I mean, yes, we could take pins, put a pin here and a pin here, and a wire right in between, and it'll help kind of hold, push this together and do the same thing here, pin here and pin here. But these cra these are more cracks than breaks. This is the only break, and it's not really necessary to drill into the shell, because you can see the neosporin in there, the antibiotic ointment, you can see that kind of oozing out right there so that it helps it heal up. You can see the greasy look. But there's no real need to start drilling into this shell when it's not that bad off. That would be the simple gesture. Now, again, there's a lot of facilities that do this. I mean, a lot of folks ask us about uh, donations. You know, we never talk about money on, on the YouTube channel or anything else. Uh, but donations, people are welcome to, uh, to send donations and things like that for the care. It does help with the care of these animals. Because a lot of these animals, we don't charge for them. A lot of vets' offices, which really piss me off, and that's why I think a lot of uh, vets that actually see exotics are scumbags. I mean, yeah, they have bills they have to pay for, but at the same time, these wild animals, uh, they're charging people that don't even, they don't even belong to the, uh, uh, the people as pets. They're trying to charge them for the care of a wild animal. And this, you know, they, they got into it like doctors should have got into it for the care of, uh, of humanity. And these, you know, these vets should have got into doing this for the love of, of the animals themselves and wanting to see animals survive and thrive. But 
a lot of folks will try and charge, especially vet offices will try and charge for just doing stuff like this. And these guys are releasable. As soon as, so as this heals, there will always be a scar here. Now understand this, there'll be a scar right through here. But the great thing about the box turtles, they actually have regenerating shells. And so this, like our bones, when our bones break, it'll you know build up calcium in, in the break or the fracture. And these will do the same thing. They'll actually start growing back together. And so yes, there will be a scar. There'll be a small, uh, there'll be a small separation right here. And there'll be a scar all through here. Every bit of this will have a little scarring. However, this little girl right here will come back perfectly fine. She'll be uh, more than healthy and be releasable, be able to go back to wherever she come from. And if, of course, if she come from kind of a heavy traffic area, then a lot of the times we'll try and uh, just go ahead and keep them in captivity and either find a, um, an educational facility or somebody that, uh, that does long-term care, uh, captive care. They keep them uh, for long-term captive care because we just do the initial, uh, initial work and uh, we keep some, uh, but we try and release some or we, there, we have access to other folks that, uh, that will take them for long, uh, long-term captive care uh, if they cannot be released so anyways but yeah uh, donations uh, folks have asked us about doing donations before and I've never really said anything about it before but yeah now folks are more than welcome to uh, write us in and find out about donations because that does help us actually take care of these these wild uh, wild type animals that come in where uh, no money is is given by the state or anybody else for taking care of these guys but anyways this is simple well, she's beautiful 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 shell check that out it's just gorgeous gorgeous little animal All right, guys, so we can see about three weeks later, you can see this little guy is already starting to close off. This gap right here is going to take quite a while, but you can already see quite the difference as it's already starting to heal back together. You can see some still remnants. You can see the greasy from the antibiotic ointment we continue using. This guy's getting a little bit, uh, a little bit more social as well, but... There we go. So now it's just a matter of rehabilitation time and finding it a good place to spend the rest of his life. Now, I hope this has been, I don't want to say the word enjoyable, because obviously we don't want to have joy out of another animal's, you know, out of an animal suffering, but I hope you've enjoyed this video. And again, if you would like to be of help uh, to us or to any other uh, facilities that deal with these kind of things, feel free to get with us. We're happy to tell you how you can uh, lend a helping hand in donations and you know, supplies and whatever the case may be. Now, we appreciate you following along week after week after week. Make sure to write us in and let us know of things that you want us to film about. Our information will be in the description below for those needing to get in touch with us. We take phone calls all the time, medical related, housing, ecosystems, pets. We sell pets quite often and the stuff to go with them, food and as well. So if you're looking for a new pet, feel free and let us know. Get with us. We're happy to help you out. Also, make sure to feel free to check out our TikTok channel entitled Reptile Rangers and the Kernersville Reptile Zoo's Instagram page as well. We have one of those also. Now, again, we hope this has been helpful. Hope you've enjoyed this. We appreciate you coming along week after week after week. We'll either see you here at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.